Hello and welcome to Concordia On Air. My name is Ingrid. And I'm Parker. On today's show... In news, a deadly volcanic eruption in New Zealand. In sports, an explosive performance from Mary Sam. And on A&E... Your favorite holiday songs and movies. All that and more on Concordia On Air. So Parker, it is the week before finals. How are you feeling? I am scared, but not too scared. I think I'm more just excited to get my finals over with. I have been lucky to only have one actual final. Um, everything else is just presentations, um, and maybe I think I have two papers in there. What is your final situation looking like? Um, I had a presentation on Monday. And I have a, a paper in that class, which I'm not too worried about. It's kind of just like a big, big old reflection yeah. paper. Um, and I, I have, I think I only have one final as well. And oh, it's good. a take-home test, yeah. which is okay. Well, good. I've got, well, I guess I do have another test, but it's pretty, like, chill. But I do have a, a constitutional law take-home test. Tell me about that. What um, is constitutional law? We that learn just about interesting. the Constitution <laughs> and laws. So good. I mean, okay, um, yeah, it's a political science class, but um, yeah, the last test that we're doing will be mostly on freedom of speech and wow. stuff like that. Um, so usually those tests are pretty easy in that class, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty lucky. But yeah, basically just finishing up writing a few papers doing a few more projects, um, but the end is in sight. I can good. see a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited <laughs> for you, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. What are your plans over winter break? Um, so I'm gonna go home for winter break. Nice. Um, spend Christmas with my family and probably New Year's with my friends. Um, one of my friends is hoping to get us to go down to St. Louis, Missouri. St. So we'll Louis. see if that plays out. Never been there. What's in St. Louis for y'all? Um, she has family there. Oh, okay. And it would just be somewhere to go. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, see the, see the see great the arch. country. I don't know. <laughs> is that, <laughs> that is where that is. Yeah, I think. Um, but yeah, so okay, basically just cool. pretty chill. Yeah. Um, what are your winter break plans? So mine, I'm very excited for mine. I'm going to New Zealand um, just for a vacation to go visit one of my best friends from high school. She was a foreign exchange student um, in Holly, where I'm from. And I'm going to go and I'm going to see her with my other friend Taylor. Um, and we're just going to, I don't know, live it up in New Zealand. I, I did just hear from our new segment that there was a volcano eruption in New Zealand. So <laughs> we'll have to see how that turns out. But I, I'm, I'm optimistic that we will be okay. That's good. That's exciting. Yeah. That seems like a fun way to spend your break. Yeah, Much that's what I think. Much different than sticking around here. Yeah, I was always <laughs> jealous of those kids in high school that came back from winter break with a tan because they went to Florida. And now this year, that's going to be me. I'm going to have a tan. That's super exciting. I hope that is fun for you. Thank you. All right, now over to news. Hi, I'm Elise. And I'm Andrew. Last Saturday, students and alumni alike came together to make tie blankets for children in need. The event was hosted by SALT, or Students and Alumni Linked Together, and is a great opportunity to give back to the Fargo-Moorhead community. All blankets made at the event went to Project Linus, a nonprofit organization which delivers handmade blankets to children in hospitals, shelters, social service agencies, and wherever else needed. The organization's goal is to provide comfort and security to children in difficult situations, as well as to create enjoyable service opportunities in local communities. Everyone was welcome to the on-campus event, and other features of the morning included card making, pictures with Santa, cookie decorating, and a hot chocolate bar. After Minnesota Governor Tim Walz announced new statewide initiatives on climate change, Democrats in the state are pushing for change in the Senate as well. 
On Tuesday, Democrats announced the creation of the new Senate DFL Clean Energy and Climate Change Caucus, which currently has 29 members. The goals of the caucus include advancing research for clean energy in Minnesota and combating environmental issues that aggravate climate change. These, annou these announcements followed several actions by the Walls administration relating to climate change, including the addition of a climate change subcabinet and pushes to adopt 100% clean power legislation, which will require utilities to use carbon-free energy sources by 2050. Fargo police are searching for an escaped inmate in the FM area. On Sunday, December 8th, at approximately 5.20 a.m., Juan Francisco Martinez left Center Inc., a rehabilitation facility in Fargo. The 30-year-old U.S. Bureau of Prisons inmate was serving a federal sentence for being a convicted felon in possession of a firearm. While Martinez's current location is currently unknown, he is wanted by U.S. Marshals. He's a Hispanic male, 5'8", and weighs 130 pounds. Authorities ask that anyone with information on Martinez's whereabouts contact Fargo Police or the U.S. Marshals Service at 701-297-5760. The House Judiciary Committee's, Committee's Democratic majority released two proposed articles of impeachment against President Trump on Tuesday, making him only the third president in U.S. history to be accused of high crimes and misdemeanors. The first article charges the president with abuse of power for pressuring Ukraine to assist his 2020 re-election. Earlier investigations had revealed that Trump withheld military aid for Ukraine's struggle against Russia, a conflict that has resulted in over 13,000 deaths, in order to pressure the state to publicly announce investigations into his Democratic rivals. The second article charges him with obstruction of Congress for refusing to cooperate with House subpoenas during the impeachment inquiry. If approved, these articles could go to the House floor for debate and vote as early as next week. At least five people are dead and dozens injured after a volcanic eruption on New Zealand's White Island. The island, which attracts over 10,000 tourists per year, is a popular destination for cruise lines, many allowing their customers to explore the volcano of Wakari. On Monday, many tourists were doing just that when the volcano began spewing ash and smoke thousands of feet into the air. First responders arrived at the island within minutes, rescuing 34 people, the majority of whom were immediately hospitalized, suffering from burns and smoke inhalation. Meanwhile, eight people are still missing. This natural disaster has caused many to question why the cruise line was at White Island when just weeks before, geolo geologists had warned of volcanic unrest. While the cruise line has yet to make any statements, experts warn that further eruptions are likely. Time magazine recently named climate activist Greta Thunberg as its Person of the Year, making her the youngest person ever to receive the award. Thunberg began to gain attention in August of 2018 after skipping school to protest climate change outside the Swedish parliament in Stockholm, where she grew up. She has since become the leading face of a movement that represents her generation's desire to combat the acceleration of climate change, inspiring protests in dozens of other countries. She's also been present at several important international events, speaking before the United Nations, the Pope, and several other heads of state. Other candidates for this year's award, in, uh, for this year's award of Person of the Year included House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, President Trump, the Ukraine whistleblower, and the Hong Kong protesters. According to a reader's poll conducted by the magazine, the Hong Kong protesters deserved Person of the Year. The award is often given to large groups of people, as the 2018 award went to journalists all over the world. And now, on to sports. Concordia College's newest and most sustainable building, the Integrated Science Center, is home to many wonderful features that make it LEED Gold certified. Let's hear about some of these different efforts. Uh, this is the living wall and it's actually made up of a bunch of like individual plants um, and it really represents um, Concordia's sustainability goals. The Integrated Science Center is super sustainable and one of the reasons why it is is that they've kept the same stairwells that they've, they had in the original infrastructure of the building. And you can see the like, original beams. And they haven't really like, um, like, m polished them or like, made them look really pretty, which I appreciate because it's like, wow, that's actually a building. It's a cool place that it's not only for people who are involved in STEM, and that it's a really nice place for like, student orgs to meet and different places like, for collaboration. So for each floor they have a little button that you can push and then it has all these little segments that say like LED lighting, different like lab um, sustainability features.
My favorite part about the ISC is all of the natural lighting it has. I know when they were building um, the ISC, they really tried to have like as many windows as possible so they can get as much natural light without using like other artificial sources. Much like the kinetic sculpture, the Integrated Science Center has many moving parts working together to accomplish one goal. For the ISC, that goal is sustainability. This is Carson and Sam with Concordia On Air. Merry Christmas, sports fans. And I'm Dom. The Cobber women's hockey team were back on the ice after Thanksgiving break against number 10 ranked St. Thomas last weekend. St. Thomas jumped out to an early lead with a goal in the first period, as well as building on their lead with a pair of unanswered goals in the second. Sarah Bauman got Concordia on the board in the third period with but an empty net goal for St. Thomas put the game away. This 4-1 loss drops the Cobbers to 2-5 and five in the Mayak and 4-5 and five overall. Let's wish the, them the best of luck when they open up a two-game series against Wisconsin Eau Claire on Friday the 13th. The men's team also faced off against St. Thomas last weekend. They found themselves in a 2-0 hole, but Jake Ellison and Aaron Hurt scored two unanswered goals to tie the game at two with 17 minutes remaining in the third period. Unfortunately, St. Thomas was able to score the game-winning goal a minute later, sinking the Cobbers by a score of 3-2. This loss puts Concordia's conference record at 2-3-1 and and one this season and 4-6-1 and six and one overall. The Cobbers will have over a month off before returning to the ice on January 10th. The men's basketball team's woes continued last weekend when they committed 13 turnovers and only shot 2 of 7 from 3-point range in their 69-54 loss to St. Mary's. The Cardinals jumped to, out to a 38-27 halftime lead and never looked back. Despite the loss, Concordia junior Bryden Urie had a great game, notching 18 points and 3 assists, which led the team. Jacob Fredrickson also led the team in rebounds, including 4 offensive boards. This marks the Cobbers' third conference loss and brings the team's <laughs> overall record to 2-5 this season. Concordia will look for their first conference win of the season tonight against Carleton. For women's basketball, the Cobbers' fourth quarter rally lifted them to a 76-71 victory against St. Mary's thanks to an impressive performance from Mary Sem. Sem continued her early season dominance with the team leading 17 points and 5 assists. Bailey Larson also did her part and led Concordia with 8 rebounds. This victory is the Cobbers' first conference win of the season, which brings their overall record to 3-5. The women are playing their final home game of the year tonight at 7 against Carleton. And now to a and &E. Welcome to a and &E. I'm KJ. I'm Gabe. And I'm Parker. Today on a and &E, we are going to play a little bit of a game, an activity. I believe it's called a tier list. Yes, I believe this was your idea, Gabe. It was. Do you want to explain a little bit of the activity to us? Okay, so basically we're going to bring up just uh, all the Christmas songs and Christmas movies afterwards that we can think of and then tier them, which basically means rate them whether they are uh, high tier, middle tier, or low tier. And then we'll kind of argue our points depending on if we disagree or not. Okay, I'm ready for this. We can start with songs then. Okay, the first song I have is Feliz Navidad. High tier. High Definitely tier high right tier. Away. High tier. Mm, I'll just, I'll just, I'll give you guys this one. I'll say high tier. Yeah, I, 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 I thank you for giving it to <laughs> me. Uh, I think it's like one of those songs that you can just belt out in the car and it's just really, really fun to listen to. Those are the only lyrics I know though. Yeah. <laughs> Next is All I Want for Christmas is You. Low tier. Oh. I'm taking a stance on I'd say this middle. One. I'd say middle tier. Mid -tier. I think it's like the first Christmas song I'll listen to, and then beyond that, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good with this one. All right, that's fair enough. If it want, once is okay, yeah. not more than once. I agree. <laughs> Next is It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. It's Beginning to Look. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say high, mid, mid it's to high. Really? Middle. I would say it's I would say mid low. Mid low. But yeah, I, it's it's classic, but it's I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it's much more than that. It gets All right. boring after a while. That's fair. Next is rocking around the Christmas tree. High tier. <laughs> Such I agree. a high tier. Yeah, I'll agree. So good. I'll agree. That's Such a, a fun that's, one. that's a good one. I'm glad that we agree. Yeah, that's Next a is Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle Bell. Mid tier at best. It depends on who's singing it. That's because true. Because there's this one version on Spotify that I was listening to, and it was like <laughs> well, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell. Rock. Oh right, and I that did, version. It just sounded too like twangy to me. <laughs> no. 
Okay, so would that so that makes it worse or better? I think for me it's a lower tier, but if it was sung by someone I enjoyed, then it might it might be up there. Okay, so let's settle on mid tier. Yeah, well, mid tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. mid tier. How about let it snow? Let it snow, let it snow. High tier, and I'll, I'll explain tier? why. Um, because every time I hear it, I think of that Campbell's commercial, and that brings oh, back nostalgia. You're so right. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. That was like, I'll, I'll the accept best, that. like winter commercial. Ever. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that. that. Let's do two more songs, and then we'll yeah. move on to the Okay. Movies. Sleigh Ride. Sleigh, Sleigh Ride. ride. Okay, it's high tier. Oh, That's it. Oh, you guys don't wait, know. Wait, on it. a run. One horse opens. Yep, sleigh. there you go. Hey. Wait, jingle. <laughs> That's no, jingle. wait, not that one, but the other one. Where I have to say low tier because I don't know it. But dang. Oh, yeah. We'll see. yeah. We're going to overrule you, low tier. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, the one last more. one, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Oh. High tier. High tier. That is I, the best. I don't, I don't know it, so I'll, I'll, I'll agree. You know my singing voice? I'm a, I'm a no. bass to baritone. I will, I will get into that tenor scale to bump that one up. That was yeah. so good. Perfect. Okay. All right. Movies next. Moving on to movies. Okay. So, uh, I should probably start with How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the original uh, TV Animated? Special. That's animated, yeah. Yeah. I'd say medium high. Yeah, I'd say medium high. high. Yeah, I'm, I I'd like say. it, but I'm not ever like wowed. Animal. Wowed mm -hmm. it. All right, that's fair. Yeah. All right. Um, then we should probably go on to the Jim Carrey version of How the Grinch Stole high Christmas. Tier. High tier. You're going to rank that higher than the original? Yes, I really like it. I think it's hilarious. Really? No. Mm. I would rank it like mid tier. Yeah, mid tier. Best. It's yeah. like, it's. It's one of those Tim Burton. It's Tim Burton, right? Is it? I, I would I not know. doubt it. Well, honestly. It, it looks like Tim Burton. I'll yeah, say it does. That. It's kind of uncanny, though. Just the noses. Yeah. They get me. <laughs> All right. Um, how about the Polar Express? Um, Ooh. Movies, oh my really goodness. I, I'm, I, I'm going to say hi to you because I have a good memory of like watching the Polar Express in first grade, and it was like our pajama party at school. Oh yeah. And here's why I'd agree with you. It's Steven Spielberg, and then it's Tom Hanks, and no Tom Hanks movie can be that bad. It's so. mid-tier. I don't like it that much. Really? why. There was that one scene towards the end with the little presents and stuff that always scared me as a kid, and I just can't see past that now. Where they get, like, yeah. where they like, get stuck in the present yeah, thing. Yeah. I agree. Oh. I think growing up in, like, rural <laughs> Minnesota, my, grad my dad always told me, do not go in a grain bin, because you'll get sucked down oh, the yeah. And I that's suppose, what it reminds I me of. I when you think of that, it makes <laughs> it. Okay, well, let's think. say. I don't know. We can lower it to mid-tier with that said. Um, how about Elf? No. I'm gonna say low. <laughs> you know, very low. low. People give it a bad rap, but I think it's really, I think it's really cute, and I love Zoe Deschanel. Like, I, I would say medium to high. I'd say, I'll say medium because um, it's a good movie, but it's like really overplayed. Yeah, and, and I people agree. like it is like, overplayed. People know Elf, but people don't know a lot of other good Christmas movies sometimes, mm -hmm. and it's like, I mean, um, how about okay? We should probably do Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Mm, not high. one of my favorites. Really? I would say mid to high myself. Yeah. Just mid high. It's, it's not, it's not up bit, there, up the there, but it's almost there. Yeah. Okay. Alright, that's fair. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's should we, okay. Should we add one more? We'll do one more quick. Okay, Bad Santa. Bad Santa? No, <laughs> no, Bad Santa <laughs> gives me the creeps. Okay. <laughs> what, are you, what do you think, KJ? Well, Parker's Yeah. Uh, that's, that's do you like it? it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll end with that. All right, end we'll end that. on that note then. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to a &E. Now on to the movie corner. Happy holidays, Christmas movie fans. Um, it's uh, me and Grant. Grant doesn't have a mic right now, but we are going to be talking about our favorite Christmas movies. I have a favorite, and he also has a favorite. I'm Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of movies, let's get right into it. Why don't you start it off? My favorite Christmas movie by far has to be none other than Home Alone. Mm -hmm. I love Kevin McAllister. His antics are just iconic. All of his pranks, I thought of pulling at least once when I was a kid. Because mm -hmm. when I first saw the movie, I was like, wow, I've always wanted to do this. But right. since my parents never left me home alone for that long, <laughs> I could never set anything up. Also... Joe Pesci never really tried to invade my house. Uh huh. Right. That was one of my first like home movies that I made. Is me and my friends would just go and we'd like 
set up like booby traps and 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 like kind of lay out matchbox cars to like slip on <laughs> and stuff like that it was it was you know it was a good time it, it's so <laughs> weird to think growing up and you're like wow he really just could have went to the neighbor's house <laughs> <laughs> yeah really but uh yeah and also did you know the cop from home alone that's Joe Pesci, because apparently I, I caught on to that when I was a kid, but apparently everyone on the internet is like, yo, did you know that's Joe Pesci? He was just scouting out the place the whole time. <laughs> or some people think he just played two roles, but mm -hmm. really he's just pretending. Because right. what cop really goes over to someone's house and just checks it out exactly. before they're going? Exactly. There's a, so this is, this is a movie where amazing, amazing movie. Almost, almost the same tier sequel. I'd say mm -hmm. I, I really like it. Home Alone Two was also very Lost good. In New York. I loved it. Yep. Especially the Pigeon Lady. The Pigeon Lady. You know, I, I so I rewatched it over Thanksgiving, and I'm like, wow, that Pigeon Lady, very cool. Iconic. Such mm -hmm. a great accent. But uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, another good movie that has a great franchise of its own. I believe is your favorite Christmas. Absolutely, movie. my favorite Christmas movie is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It is uh, the most quoted movie in our extended family's household, and we we talk about it all the time. I would love to share my favorite quotes, but unfortunately, they are not exactly rated G uh, movie quotes. I know one <laughs> rated G quote that gets me every time. Right. It's it's when the aunt is it. She's about to say prayers at the dinner table. <laughs> say grace. And she, yeah, she <laughs> says the pledge of allegiance. That gets me every time. So the, yeah, so that's what we do every time, and every uh, every time we have a turkey or something like, I got the neck or something like that, or save me, save me the neck, <laughs> Clark or something like. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I absolutely love the movie. I I would consider it one of the first movies, Christmas movies that broke the the family mold. You know, they we had this big old dysfunctional family. Uh, all the all the little vignettes about the whole thing. Uh, because they have, there's like the countdown, right? Because mm -hmm. they open up the little, the yeah, so I love, I love movies with little tiny scene vignette uh, pieces to it. So absolutely I, amazing. I also loved Clark Griswold because he reminded me so much of my dad. Yeah? And yeah, really? <laughs> I'd have to say I was, uh, I was more of a cousin Eddie though. You were, yeah. Me, my personality. Oh my goodness. I'm 100% Eddie. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so those are, I mean, that's my favorite, that's your favorite. Any other ones that kind of stick out that they didn't talk about? That they didn't it? talk about? Um, let me think. It's a Wonderful Life. I've heard of it. I, <laughs> yeah, no, it's very good. I, I watched it out of season uh, last September yep. when I first got on Amazon mm -hmm. Prime Video. Good so on. if anyone wants to watch it, it's on Prime Video. Very good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, what other movies, Christmas Gosh, movies, do you like? We already talked about the Polar Express. They that's did. That's very good. Uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I like that one. A Christmas Without a Santa Claus? Oh, I've, Probably. That was weird. I watched that in fourth yeah. grade in class. One of my favorite deep. musical numbers, <laughs> Mr. Heat Miser. So good. It's stuck in my head year round, even though I only watch the movie at Christmas. Gosh, what else is a great Christmas movie? We, all they, those they, animated ones yeah like exactly. rudolph style yeah, yeah, yeah. santa claus they made a those. couple sequels to that rudolph returns and stuff like that but mm -hmm. um there's a jack frost one but jack frost isn't necessarily christmas right right technically just kind of wintry mm -hmm. well thanks for uh you know sharing yeah. sharing stuff this has always been fun uh happy holidays uh film fans Hello, this is Ingrid again, um, and I have a trivia quiz game um, that we're going to be playing with people from all segments of our show. Um, so there's going to be three rounds where two people compete against each other answering trivia questions, um, and the finalists from each round will compete against each other um, once again and tell me in a special, special round. Um, where they will tell me a Christmas joke. Um, so our first round, we have KJ and Elise. All right. Um, so how this is going to work is I'm going to read a question and some answers. Um, and once I'm done reading the question, if you know the answer, you can tap the table, and I will I'll put the mic up to you, and you can tell me what the answer is. So um, question one. What country was the first to use the tradition of the Christmas tree? Oh, <laughs> I was going to read options. But I know. But you know? Okay. <laughs> um, what do you have, KJ? Finland. That is incorrect. Um, how would I read the answers? And we can try again. So, um, A, Finland, B, Russia, C, Germany, or D, Austria? Austria? No. Germany. It was Germany. Okay. 
1.4 kj. <laughs> um, okay, so question two. When was Christmas declared as a federal holiday in the U.S.? A, 1850, B, 1870, C, 1890, or D, 1900? 1850. Mm-mm. 1900? Uh-uh. <laughs> 1870? It was 1870. All right. <laughs> so you are tied at this point. There's one more question. Um, so three, why was the Grinch so mean and how the Grinch stole Christmas? A, his heart was two sizes too small. B, his shoes didn't fit. C, his dog made him mad, or D, his house was too far away from town. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to say you hit it first. Um, A, his heart was two sizes too small. Yes. Um, so Elise wins round one. All right, see you in the final. Um, our next guests are Grant and Gabe. <laughs> All right, welcome to the quiz, Grant and Gabe. Uh, okay, so, um, like I said before, let me finish reading the question and the options, and then hit the table when you know the answer after I'm done reading the question. Okay, so, um, first question. What did the traffic cop holler to Frosty? A, a living snowman. B, go. C, turn left. Or D, stop. I believe it's stop. You are correct. Oh. The answer is stop. <laughs> okay. Um, question two. Um, what was the gift that my true love sent to me on the sixth day of Christmas? A, six geese a laying. B, six chickens a clucking. C, six pigeons a cooing. Or D, six emu a running. I'm gonna guess uh, C. C, six pigeons a cooing. You are incorrect. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Grant, six geese a laying. That is correct. So that is two points for Grant. <laughs> we'll do one more question just for fun. Um, after red and green, what are the two most popular Christmas colors? A, blue and white. B, orange and blue, C, purple and yellow, or D, silver and gold? I'm going to guess blue and white. Mm -mm. Really? Silver and gold. Silver and gold, you are correct. <laughs> All right, so Grant wins that round. Oof. See you in the finals. Andrew. Nice work. Yeah. All right, and the final round is Andrew versus Dom. Oh. Welcome to the quiz. Um, <laughs> All right, so question one. What was tinsel originally made of? A, lead. <laughs> B, tin. C, silver. Or D, gold. Tin? That is incorrect. Lead? <laughs> it's not that either. <laughs> it would have been funny if it was. <laughs> we would have all had tinsel. All right. Are there any more guesses? The other t gold. <laughs> Incorrect. Silver. Yes. Okay. One more for Dom. <laughs> um, all right. So. Did I get the point? Yes, you get one point for that. Um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street centers around what real life department store? Macy's. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> I was supposed to read the answers first, but that's okay. I'll give you the point there. <laughs> um, and, okay, so the final question. Let me read the answers for this one first. <laughs> um, so, what Christmas carol was the first song ever broadcast from space in 1965? A, Blue Christmas. B, Deck the Halls. C, Last Christmas by Wham. Or D, <laughs> Jingle Bells. Blue Christmas? Mm-mm. Jingle Bells? It was Jingle Bells. Oh. All right, so Andrew yeah. wins that one. Um, and you can stay up for the final. Um, if I could have my other finalists come back up. Um, all right, so the final round is um, I, I need you to make up a Christmas joke. 
and tell it to me. I'll go if not. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready, Grant? Right. Why couldn't Santa get out of his driveway? Because he didn't have a shovel in his garage. He only had a ho, ho, ho. <laughs> All right. That was a good one. Who else has a joke, Elise? All right. What do you call a broke Santa Claus? Saint Nicholas. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, Andrew. Why does the elf spend all his time on the shelf? I don't know why. Because he's a little bored. <laughs> Come on. It's oh, good. All right. It's good. It's a good one. <laughs> It's a classic. You haven't heard the elf on a shelf one. Give it you, to me. Give you it to tried me. it. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'm the judge of this. They were all pretty funny, but I liked Elise's the best. So Elise, you win Christmas trivia this year. Woo! Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for competing. You were all winners in my eyes. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching Concordia on air. See you next semester.